This is Lee with 82 Gaming 12, and I've got another video over fighting formations. We've got the <clears throat> Cross Deutschland Motorized Infantry Division, and we're playing uh, Scenario 16 from the expansion Battle for Kharkov. Okay. Both these games were uh, produced by GMT. Uh, of course, Fighting Formations is, is a game designed by Chad Jensen. Came out in 2011. And then the expansion, designed by Brian R. Van Norwick, came out in 2018. So it uses the core system of uh, Chad Jensen's game uh, with uh, some... Uh, different scenarios which uh, have to do with the uh, Kharkov uh, campaign or kind of an uh, uh, I guess a side venue of Kursk it takes place in 1943 and we've got some tigers uh, and one of the scenarios is, is entitled tigers and that's uh, scenario 16 so uh, we've uh, are seeing how uh, tigers uh, react uh, and uh, how they uh, can uh, combat the uh, Russians' T-34, uh, the Soviets. So, um, let's see here. Got a couple of things here, but uh, sponsors real quick. I got this one fell down here. We'll do it. Ooh, almost knocked some stuff around here. Okay, we'll do it first. It's uh, Pro Mat deck protector sleeves okay these are actually uh a ultra pro product and uh these are uh, really nice cards uh protectors uh, they're not cards they're card protectors sleeves smooth shuffling okay these are for gaming cards okay uh, i've used these uh on another games uh, I opened this up and I showed you uh, what they look like and how the cards fit in them, everything, uh, in an earlier video. So, um, fairly cheap. This uh, one here, I think I got it on uh, on a sales rack. Uh, but I know uh, online at ultrapro.com, uh, see if you can see that, bring it up here, right here, World Wide Web, uh, you can get uh, a 50 pack for $3.99. Of course, then you're going to have shipping, but uh, you can get these at gaming stores, and now they're going to be more expensive at the gaming store, uh, anywhere from like $5.99 to $8.799, $8.99, okay? Um, and if you get a, a hundred pack, you know, you, you can expect to spend probably uh, $10.99 and so forth, maybe more, but online, they're going to be cheaper, but again, you've got the shipping, which shouldn't be that much on these little cars they put them in an envelope really so uh you can also reach them at uh, twitter at ultra pro i-n-t-l-e for standing for international and then also on facebook pull this up here so you see it at ultra pro international so it's a very good uh sleeve to put your cards in okay i haven't had any that have been ripped uh, that have ripped on me yet uh, you know, these, uh, some of the cards, uh, sleeves, they, they tend to have, they, uh, tend to rip. Okay. Uh, those that have used them know what I mean. So, uh, I find these to be very good quality and, uh, inexpensive. So check those out. Those back up there. Let me stand. Okay. And then the next thing we have, we have, uh, Chessex. Okay. And, uh, this is a speckled uh, stealth polyhedry seven die set that I've got here. Uh, got to look close to see the speckling, but it's black speckling uh, on blue with uh, white uh, numerals, numerals. So this one here was $5.99. Uh, there are different prices. Uh, if uh, it's just the plain dice, like the yellow dice there that I've showed, that was, I think, $4.99. I've even seen them for $3.99. I might have a set here at $3.99. No, let's see what this is. 
Oh yeah, here's the here's the set. This was uh, this is called uh, let's see what they call it, OPEC Dusty Green slash Copper, and it was uh, three ninety nine at Game Store. And uh, these dice are made in uh, Denmark, and um, you can find out more information about uh, these dice at Chessex.com. It's right there. Like I said, they got a lot of different colors, styles, and so forth. They've also got, uh, if you just want like six-sided six -sided dice, they've got those. I've got, man, I've got quite a few of these sets. Um, I see a color that I like, then I, I buy it even if I don't need the dice. I just say, hey, I like that color. So some of my games, I like to have, uh, you know, a dice that with the color that's, you know, similar to the uniforms they wore or, you know, just the nation's, uh, one of those nation's uh, colors that they use in their flag and uniform and so forth. So, uh, so I have quite a few of those. All right, so uh, let's uh, move on from there. And we're in still in turn 11. Uh, Blast video, probably have some lapses there. Uh, I was uh, pretty exhausted when I was trying to make that video. I should have, should have waited. Uh, but uh, I thought I, I could uh, get through a few orders, um, but I struggled, really struggled uh, staying focused on that uh, last video. So hopefully uh, I'm uh, more awake this time. I've got my coffee, my soda, got some water to drink, stay hydrated. We'll see. All right, so let's take a look over here at the order matrix and where the peg is. I call it the peg. Okay. Uh, it's at three on the German side of the initiative track. So that means the Germans can choose an order. Okay. And I think what they're going to do is they're, they're going to, they've got to, they've got to think about things here because with the, uh, when, the next turn comes, we've got a roll for uh, sudden death. And, uh, you know, so we've only got five orders left. And the Germans need, let's go back here to our, to our map. They've got control over this objective X here. They're probably gonna gain that pretty easily. Same thing with this one down here, okay. Um, and then they've got these two over here that they've got to get to. So whether or not we push with some guys here and push through, which you've got these uh, this pretty powerful gun here uh, and a machine gun and a submachine gun unit here. Um, might be easier to just push from, from back here and, and just run straight along the edge here and just pick these up um, while the Russians will be uh, Soviets. We'll be trying to uh, maybe uh, drop back to cover those those uh, locations with some units, um, and maybe try to hold out and keep the uh, Germans from gaining a major victory here. Um, we've got all this fighting going on over here with these tanks and guns, and also down here we've got this tiger up against this uh, T-34 that is now involved in a melee, okay, but uh, that T-34 is stunned. Can't move or fire at the moment. So um, Tiger's got an opportunity to, to knock it out, but it's gonna cost some initiative to do that. So when we fire, some of these units fire, it's gonna cost initiative. I was thinking, well, I'm gonna be able to do two orders. No, I'm not gonna be able to do two, or two orders. I don't have any more available command So it's going to be turned over to the uh, to the Russians, the Soviets, after this uh, next order to take pull. So, all right, here we go. So what I want to do is I can't move. I would have liked to have moved, but I don't want to use one of these high uh, cubes yet. Okay, um, just not yet. I don't want to give the uh, the Soviets you know, maybe two orders or three orders in a row here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose this one here, okay? 
So we put the black marker there for, for the two okay, that we chose. And then we're gonna stay with the fire. So we're gonna stay here with fire. So we're gonna fire units. And that's gonna cost us on the peg here. We gotta move two because that's what it costs, two. So we're at one, okay? That's gonna cost us more than that because I'm going to be looking to a fire with with uh, quite a few units here. Okay, let's see here. This unit can't fire, so no use activating him. Now this guy can, so I want to flip him over. Okay, that's not going to cost me anything because he's in this zero command here. Um, and then I've got this guy here that's shaking. He's in here, and I want to activate him. Okay, so I'm activating him. He's actually on top of all that right there. Okay, then, <clears throat> let's pull back here. I know over here I've got another zero command, so that means I can activate um, some of these other guys. There's These two guys are here. Um, this guy can't fire. What is this here? That guy can't fire. This guy can fire at this guy, so I'm going to flip him over. Look at that. Um, these guys have a range of three. One, two, three, four, five. They could fire right here. Um, they're going to be firing eight. Yeah, eight. Eights. He's got a 12, he's got a 10. Okay, I don't want to throw a card down. So yeah, let's go ahead and have these guys fire. Why not? One of them may just fire at that machine, that machine gun down there. It's not gonna cost me anything. So this guy, he could fire to here. This guy could fire to here. All right. Um, those guys over there are gonna cost, those guys that cost two, I don't wanna do that with them. So we're not gonna do fire with those guys. So, so far it didn't cost anything extra. Now, when we get down here, this is where it's gonna cost us extra. Okay, because right down here, this guy's, we could just ignore this. We don't actually have to do anything here. And that way I could, then I could fire. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait. Because I've still got the initiative there. I don't need to fire with that guy yet. I can wait and pull the next order cube and then fire with them. And that's the thing. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So let's just fire with what we got here. Okay. Um... And this guy, if he's going to return fire, he's got to use tactical command, which is going to cost one. And uh, this gun can could fire. Okay, but uh, he's got to only fire at the guys that, that are stacked against him in melee. All right, so we got uh, melee fire right here. That's what we're going to do first. Pull in here. Okay, so we got this unit here. Firing against the uh, gun unit that's on, on the bottom there, okay? And his uh, defense is 12, and he's in that entrenchment. So it's actually going to be uh, 15, okay? Uh, and this guy, well, no, we don't because this is melee. So what am, I, what am I saying? Okay, we just go to the melee table. Okay, so that is a machine gun unit. And any gun, i got to get an 11 here. This is a machine gun, and any uh, Soviet gun is an 11. That's what I got to roll. Okay, so roll my two tens, and this is not a platoon. So, and he's inside a fortification, so I got to go down. Down to uh, two dice, I mean uh, one dice, so I'm at eights. And I rolled an 11. That's what I needed. Right, an 11. So that's a hit. And with that hit, that unit is destroyed. 
so I can move all these guys off. This unit is destroyed, this gun. Okay, so we got that entrenchment back in there. And then I can put all these guys back in here. Okay. Gonna see here. Oops. I need to check. I need to check something before I get too far ahead of myself here on, on some of this stuff. Man, that's a big stack. This is this is removed. Okay, give me a second here. I want to look at the at the uh, stacking. Seems like to me in melee you had a limit to your stacking. Let's see. Okay, it says unit stacking. So it says there's no limit to the number of units that may occupy the same hex. The one exception is the vehicle stacking limit whilst in column. Also, some beneficial fortification markers such as entrenchments or pillboxes may limit how many units may stack inside. I think that's what I read was that inside. So I think there can only be so many inside, like a squad, like a platoon. Okay, inside. Okay, let's see. Yeah. No more than one platoon or three same nationality squads may occupy stacked beneath an entrenchment. So. So, there we go. Just want to make sure on that. All right, so they knocked out that gun. Okay. And, uh, okay, then we move to this one, this here, this tank. Uh, this grenadier, which is a platoon. And he can't fire and he can't move, so we don't have to worry about uh, return fire. Unless, well, we could have return fire from... from uh, a Russian unit, but there's not a Russian unit. Well, this one, but he can't fire. You can't see him. He's off map there, off camera, right there. So we're just right there. All right, so we've got a Grenadier, okay, uh, against a T-34, okay. So we we'll take a look at our chart here, melee chart. Okay, and it shows a Grenadier, Versus a T-34, I gotta get a 14. So, okay. And uh, let's see here. I get to go up in dice. So I'm up to D12s. And I rolled a 16. That's what I needed. So that takes out this T-34. Okay. So flip him back over. And this tactical command now is lost. Okay. So. I don't know if it's lost for the game or if it's lost, just lost. Look at that. Tactical, the command, command markers. Let's see what it says here.
just goes, it says to the counter mix. What's that talking about? Goes to pending command. That's how suppose where it's going to go. Okay. So, that takes care of that. Now, let's move across here. I've got these units over here that I activated. Okay. All right. Now, what they're going to do. So, so far, the Germans are taking care of the uh, Soviets. Okay. So, we've got this big gun here with this uh, submachine gun unit together. Okay. They've got that uh, fortification. Okay. Uh, and the range, one, two, three. They've got a range of three, four, five. So it's double. So they're going to go down in one dice. Um, so the hindrance is just going to be one. Okay, so I'll go with this guy first. Okay, so we got a defense of 15. This guy's got a strength of 10, but he's rolling with eights because of the distance, the, the range. And I rolled a 13. Get over here to the... Yeah. Okay. Um, 13. Now we've got the fire defense roll. It's the two tens. Okay. So he's at 15. And he rolled six. 15. 15. Yeah, 15, that's 21. The attack was 13, that's 23. So he got hit. Okay. Now he just, he's got a pen marker. So, at the moment he can't move. Now, this submachine gun now has got to take, take a roll. Okay. And so he's at 15. No, he's at 14. He rolled a four. Yeah, he's going to be at two. Shaking. So he's shaking. All right, now this guy here can fire at the same group. He can knock out both of those. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Now it's the same thing. He's got to roll uh, eights, the eights. He rolled uh, 14, eight and a six. Okay, so the gun uh, still has a defense of uh, 15. That's 12 plus the 3 for the entrenchment. Okay. And then there's, yeah, there wasn't any uh, hindrance. Okay. He rolled a 13. That's going to be 28. So he's going to be okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Now the submachine gun rolled a 7. Uh, Plus three, he's at 21. This guy rolled a 14, he's at 24. So this submachine gun unit is taken out. This guy, he's gone. All right, now let's move on. We gotta flip both of these guys back over. Okay, now this submachine gun is firing at this uh, rifle unit who's in the woods. Okay, so let's take a look at the terrain. Okay, he's in the woods. 
Okay, would cost, cover is two. Okay, and that's an obstacle. So the cover is two. Okay. I guess the hindrance is just gonna be one. There's no, there's no, uh, there's, uh, looks like some rough, but it's the cover is two. So he's at uh, a strength of a uh, defensive strength of 13. He's firing it with nine, but he's close range. So he gets to go up uh, short range. It's called short range, adjacent hex. So he goes up and die. So we're rolling 12s. Uh, sixteen. Okay, so we've got 16, that's gonna be 25. So 25 over here on the track to keep track. He's rolling 10, 10s. Oh, he rolled a 14. Okay, so 14 is gonna be 25 plus one is 20, no, plus two is, yeah, 27. So he's safe. Uh, and that takes care of all of the, uh, let's see, firing, I guess. Let's see, this guy couldn't fire. The guy's shaking. All right, so that takes care of that order. Now, take a look. Let's see that the order peg is still on the German side. Squeak. See, it's the one. So here the Germans can do the same thing. They can pick this cube right here, okay, and move two, one, two, right there. And then they can keep firing, and that's what they're going to do. Except this time, they're going to fire with some different units. Okay. Let's take a look here. Let's pull back. Okay, right here, I don't have anybody to fire at, really, except for this tank over here. But uh, this unit here, with these mines, can't fire. Okay, so no use turning him. They can't move or fire with these guys at this tank. The only thing they have, they don't have anything to fire at. All right, so we have to come back over to here. We can flip both of these guys because they're going to fire again at the same target over there. Okay, they're gonna fire back over here and it doesn't cost me anything. So they're gonna be my first target, uh, first fire. I'm we'll just gonna do that. Um, and then this guy here is gonna flip back to fire. Okay, this guy here is gonna fire. I'm gonna flip him over. That's gonna give two more to the initiative tracks so and that's on the Soviet uh, three. Okay, that cost me two. There's no order over there. Then if we come all the way back over to here, in here, I'm firing with this grenadier, okay? So that's gonna cost me one. So let's go here with four. And then this tiger is gonna fire. Okay. Now I don't know, we might fire at this here, or we might fire right here. We got two targets. We'll just have to wait to see. And uh, that's it. That's all the all the firing I have that I can do here. So, you know, I've got these I've got these uh, anti tank rifle cards, two of them, but the firepower is too too low for me to do anything against these tigers. So, our power of three, you know, I, uh, it's, uh, you know, you can't roll high, high enough to do any damage against the attacker with this gun, that, uh, that anti-tank rifle. It just has, it doesn't have the penetrative power. So, they're kind of useless. I could, draw, I could uh, use them for, uh, like, when I'm wanting to fire uh, with uh, the light machine guns, if they have them. Say so you've got some units that have some light machine guns. I don't know if I don't know if the uh, rifle units have that. Uh, yeah, they do. So I could do use it for that. So 
All right, so now let's go to our fire. Um, firing, okay. If we look over here now, this is sitting on the Soviet four initiative, okay? Which means um, they could use the this asset, okay? And they've got an asset to use, and then they could pick one of these, and then it's going to end up coming back to the German, uh, the Germans. So the Germans look like they're going to get the last, the last activation, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be uh, probably a move order because they want to try to race up to uh, to get to some of these places, so. Uh, and about all the, the Soviets could do is try to race back to, to, uh, race back to get to, uh, those control markers. I don't know where to see. All right. Now, so the first attack fire was going to be right here. Um, and I didn't do any return fire. I probably should have, but it would have gave the, the Germans more, uh, you know, would have gave them the activation, but I probably should have used at least one fire. This guy's got a 12, you know, a range of six, one, two, three, four, five. He could have fired at those guys once at least. Well, maybe I'll do it this time. Because it really, it really isn't gonna matter. So okay, so let's let's go right here first. Okay, so we've got. Um, let's go with this guy first. This guy is firing here with this eight, eight, eighty-five millimeter anti-tank gun, anti-aircraft gun is what it actually is. So we've got range of one, two, three, four, five. So he's got to go down, unless I drop a card. I have to go down. Well, I'd even have to go down this more than it's five instead of four. So it only extends the range one with that light, uh, the L symbol there. Only gives me a range of four. So, okay, still gonna be, uh, I gotta go down to uh, eight. And I rolled a three and a one. A one is gonna cause the hindrance automatically. So, um, this guy, I tell you what, he's gonna return fire now. Um, to these guys. So now we're going to reverse this. He's going to return fire. And this is in, within range. One, two, three, four, five. So uh, these guys are in that uh, the, uh, planted field. It's what? Open? No, it's just a field. Okay, the hindrance is three. They don't get any cover, but the hindrance is three. So the guy's rolling tens. He rolled a 14, so 14 and 12, 26, so 26. Okay, the first guy, okay, is 12 plus uh, 11, 23, so he got hit. And he's just shaking. And we need to flip him because he's already. Now we get this guy here. Let's see what happens to him. Five. He's going to be hit. He's only got. That's only a 17. He gets pinned, but he can still fire. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to return fire. Wanting to knock out that anti tank gun. So he goes back to eights, rolls a 10, 10 plus 10, that's what he's got, he's got 10, is going to be 20. So we just got a flat 20 there, okay. And the defense has 15, and he rolled a 12, so that's no effect. So let's go on to the next one here. We'll flip this guy over though. Flip him over. Put him right there. 
Okay, right here. That guy's in the woods. So he goes up in days, and now he's rolling 12s because he's uh, short range. Okay. We got short range. Short range. So up in dice from 10 to 12s. Uh, that guy gets a cover of two. Okay, so here we go. All right, I rolled an 11. That's gonna be 20. His defense. Woods gives him a cover of two, I believe. Yeah, two. So he's at 13. He rolled a 13, so he's, of course he missed. Jeez, how do you miss that close? All right, now we move over to here. All right, we've got this grenadier firing at that rifle unit in rough. So the, the hindrance is gonna be a two. We're rolling tens. Oh, we rolled a two, so no effect there. Now he could return fire. And since that gun returned fire, I've got to move this one on the on a mission track, which I had to do. Now we're not gonna return fire again. We're just gonna leave things as they are right there. Okay, now let's pull back over here. What's going on right here? Okay, so right here, we've got this melee. I'm gonna do it first. Okay. And this guy's in this hex, he's not in the smoke hex. All right, so. Grenadier versus T-34. Melee. Grenadier versus T-34. I need a 14. That's not a platoon. He's not in any kind of uh, fortification. So I just got two dice, 10. I need a 14 or more. I rolled an 18. So we just knocked this T-36 out with uh, infantry units. Shows you the strength. Well, I don't know if say strength, but the, uh, and they lose this, there's a command there that they lose again. Um, the versatility of infantry. Okay. And uh, how getting them into melee with a tank uh, can, help you in, uh, in destroying the tank, okay? Um, although you may say, well, you got two 10-sided dice, okay? And you've got to roll a pretty high 14, okay? With a grenadier, that's, you know, they got to roll a 14, you know, that's, that's kind of difficult to do. But, see, they don't get to roll. There's no defensive roll. It's just the, it's just the one roll. You know, when you're firing, direct fire, uh, of course, you can still have return fire. Those, those units could have take, taken some damage if they hadn't been able to destroy that tank. But the tank had a had a marker on it where it couldn't fire. So, But um, when you fire, direct fire, then you're firing to see if you get a hit, and then you're the defense is rolling to see if it penetrated, you know? So um, if they've got a pretty good defensive, uh, uh, you know, quality or strength, then it's gonna be difficult to, to knock them out with direct fire. While I, I see that it's, it's uh, may, may be a little easier to, to get in there close and uh, find a way to, to destroy the, uh, or disable it or, 
you know, put it out of action. Uh, a uh, high quality tank, you know. Same thing with the, the Tiger. Okay, if say uh, against a Tiger, you could get a rifle unit, the same thing, they're rolling a 14, you know. So, but there's a lot of benefits to getting your infantry in there. That's why it's beneficial for uh, your tanks to have infantry to protect them. You know, they they just roll into action without any infantry. They can get sworn by the infantry, you know. And, uh, you know, you get uh, several infantry units in there, and you're rolling for each one of those suckers, then, uh, you know, you got a chance to knock a tank out in one order. So, all right, now that frees this tiger up to now attack this uh, gun over here. <clears throat> okay, and that's what he's going to do. And that, this gun is in his front arc. You don't have to pivot or anything. You know, these three are his arcs, so this one rolls right out through here with that unit's in it. So he's got to go through this hindrance of, of this rough terrain. So it's a hindrance of two. Okay, and this guy's got an entrenchment, so he's at going to have a strength of 15 defense. Okay, we're using the 15, which is the, uh, the HE, the the uh, rounds that are used against uh, morale uh, defenders, okay, guns and infantry. So, all right, so we're uh, rolling within range, firing within range. That's six, one, two, three, four, five. So we're just rolling the tens and adding 15. And I got two nines, that's 18. So we're looking at 33. So this is going to be uh, 33, okay? His defense is 12. I should have done this. Uh, 12 plus 3 for the entrenchment is 15. And he rolled an 11, so he's going to get a hit. Let's see what happens. And he just gets a move pin action. Now he can return fire. It would cost, it would cost uh, two initiative. We don't want that because one thing, it's not going to work. He's got a seven, okay, and he's rolling against a twenty-seven defense. So we flip this guy back over now. All right, so that's uh, all of that order. That order's done. So. Now we pull back, and it's the Soviets' initiative over here, and they're going to pick this asset right here, and that's what they're going to choose. Number one, it's going to cost them one one initiative. That goes to two. They've got a card here, conduct an artillery barrage, and then the Germans are going to play their card, which is... Uh, play when a Soviet battery acid is played, cancel the barrage, remove that card from the game. So this card is gone. I'll put it over here out of the way. This card goes back to this, 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 uh, uh, this play, uh, pal. That's already, it's already been played. So, and then the Soviets still have, uh, They've got a card to cancel the barrage, and then they've got these two anti-tank cards that aren't worthless, in my opinion. All right, so now they get another turn here. Um, and I think what they want to do, uh, really, trying to run guys back. I don't, that guy can't move. Well, that unit can't, but that machine gun unit could move back maybe at least cover you cover something these guys they don't have enough movement to get back to back to anything so we could just draw ask it set cards and hopefully get something that can benefit us so that's what they're going to do they're going to pick this nine here regimental support they're going to draw two asset cards first one Conduct an artillery barrage. That's what we need. 
Second one, flipping the air support marker to the Soviet side. It's already there right now. So, okay. So that's what they did. They got to draw two cards. All right. Then that leaves the eight here. So we're going to take the eight off. Okay. Which is uh, battalion support. But what we want to do is we want to move. Okay. So we're going to go down here into the move marker. And we're going to move. Okay. So. All right. So let me move the peg here. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this is going to move uh, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then it's going to cost us some to move some of these units. Um, won't cost us anything to move that tank. But he's going to he's going to have to roll for. He's going to have to roll to see if he gets blown up in that mine. I'm talking about this one right here. So we could activate this guy for free. The tank activates for free. He's pointing this way. We're going to activate this guy right here. Because he can move. This guy can move. So we'll activate him and this guy. Both of those guys can move. All right, and then we go across here. This guy can't move, this guy can move, so we're gonna activate him. This guy can't move. We're gonna activate this guy. Uh, this guy's gonna activate. That guy's gonna activate. Machine gun unit. He's going to activate. Um, what else we got here? All right, down here. This guy's going to activate. They're gonna cost me one. That's a two now. He activates. That's three. <clears throat> the tiger gonna activate. That's four. This guy's activating. That's five. This guy's too far away. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy over. And this guy over. Both of them. They're going to activate. And that's going to be four more to the track here. So that puts the Soviets at nine on the initiative track. All right, so... Let's start, I'm gonna start down here with these guys.
All right, we're going to move this tiger. One, two, three, four. Five, you're going to stop. Still, like I said, it's no use if you're, even if you're on 24 plus seven, you don't want to get return fired on. So, um, this unit here, See what this guy, is that where he was? Yeah, he was pointing this way, right? So, okay, so we got one, two, two, it's right here. Let's move this guy up first. One, two, three, four, five. Can only get to right there. Flip him over. Okay. One, two. Well, yeah, we'll just go ahead and move this guy. One. So that rough cost one. Rough cost two. So that's one, two, three, four. Flip that over to German to control. Go stop. This guy goes one, two, three. Four, five, put that over to German control. Okay. Flip him over. Gonna lose that, of course. Okay, then we go up here. Okay, we've got uh, this unit right here that's shaking. He can move. So I don't want to return fire. This guy's got a six, so he goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Put both of those guys back over. Um, do I want to take that thing with them? Yeah, we're going to take that with us. This guy here is going to go one, two, three, uh, up the slope, four, five, uh, six. Flip him over. That tank is going to just move out of the hex. When he does, he gets attacked. So we roll for melee, melee on the tank. Okay, mines against the tiger has got to be a 15. He rolled a 14, so no effect. So that cost the tank two. One, two. Three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine it goes to right there. Flip him over. I guess it was too far away. I think, yeah. Okay, now we move across here to these guys over here. Alright, this guy here. He goes to there, and he gets fired on. Twelve. This goes out in the open. So he 
he's actually at 11. Hindrance of only one. So, this is the target. This is the fire. And the guy only moved one from the open there. Okay, so we've got two tens. And he rolled an eight. Plus 12 is 20. So 20. And defense, minus one, he's at 11. And he rolled a 13. So he's safe there. Okay. All right. So that was one. This is two, three. Two to go into the rough. This guy fires again. Same thing. But it's lost in the hind because of uh in the rough because of hindrance. He rolled an eight and a two. So it can keep going. So if he goes up, that's five one, two, that's two more, that's five. Five. Plus he's he's spent because uh he rate of fire is two, so spent. So that's five, six. So there he is. And the rest of these guys can move except for this machine gun here that's got got confired people. So this guy here, uh, this guy's got a range of five. So this guy here goes downhill, no effect, just uphill. But he goes down that rough, so that's two. This guy, one, two, three, four. So he's firing. So, machine gun against his grenadier moving. And he's rolling tens. He's got rough, the hindrance of two. And he rolled a one. Uh, plus also takes care of his rate of fire. Okay. So that's one, two, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So that takes care of that. So now this guy with this command marker, let's see here. You don't want to go there. Let's see, that's going to cost what? Field is one and a half. So, okay, he's going to go, he's going to go one and a half. I can't see him. One and a half. And he goes two and a half. He could fire at him. What he's going to keep is for this machine gun unit that's going to have to go, uh, well, he could go around like that. So one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. I'm gonna stop right there. No, I'm not. Four and a half, five, no, he's gotta stop there. Okay, this guy moves to here, that's one, two and a half, three and a half, now this guy's gonna fire at him. And he's gone, to, what, one, two and a half, three and a half, so he's gone three and a half. Three point five, that's half. Okay, so range is uh, two. He's got a range of two. That's within range. And he's in the open. Hendricks of one. One. He rolled a one and a zero. Okay, lost. Um, that's good. Uh, and that's, he also rolled lower, lower than his rate of fire. So he's spent. So 
That'd be four, five, six. Oh no, he got five. He's gonna stop right there. Okay. Okay, this guy here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, he's done. This guy's done. Now we go over here to these two guys. This guy's going to go here. This guy can fire at him. So we've got rifle unit firing here. He's got range of two. Eight. Hindrance uh, is two. He's got to fire through that rough. He rolls a 15. 15 and eight is 23. The defense is 12 minus one because he's in the open. He's an 11. And he rolled a 5 that's only a 16, so he takes a hit. He's broken. So he's done. And... This guy's going to run past. He's going to go this way. Now, that's going to be long range. What am I flipping him over for? But he's going to go ahead and take a shot at him. Long range. He's rolling an eight. He rolled a 13. 21. Defense is 11 because he's in the open. He rolled 11 plus 10 is 21. Uh, we roll, let's see, it's greater than or equal to, it's a miss, if it's less than, it's a hit. So, it's a miss. So, he missed. Uh, so he keep, keeps running. So that was, that was just one. Two, same thing, he could fire again. Why not? Uh, one, two, three, it's still long range. And he rolled a one, a little lost in the, lost in the uh, hindrance, and he spent. So this guy can now run wherever he wants. So that's two, three, four. Five, six, flip him over. Okay, that's moving everybody. So we pick up the spent markers. I like that spent uh, rule. When uh, you've got opportunity fire, you can't just keep firing and firing and firing and firing, you know. Uh, you know, they got to reload at some point. So I like that factor. All right, so here we are at the end of the turn. So we have to follow the end of turn procedures. And uh, see, I want to show that to you in the book. Okay, so here we go. First thing we do, okay. The turn markers advance one space forward along the time track. At the end of any turn in which there is exactly zero cubes remaining in one order mix. On the order matrix, I'm sorry, mix, what am I talking about? 
immediately after advancing the turn marker, normal play pauses and the following steps are executed in order shown. So we advance it to 12. That's the sudden death. Okay, so sudden death. The triggering player makes a sudden death roll, if appropriate. Okay. So we turn to 21-22 in the book. There it is. Sudden death. Okay. All right. If a sudden death roll ends the game, let's see, we got a roll first. Where's the procedure? There it is. Okay, right here. All right, so whenever the turn marker advances into or beyond the space occupied by the sudden death marker, the triggering player rolls two dice 10. The result is less than the number in the space currently occupied by the turn marker. The game immediately ends. Otherwise, play proceeds as normal. So if I roll less than 12, 12 less than, And I rolled, wow, I rolled a 13, so it doesn't end. Okay. So we just keep going. All right. So we've got uh, smoke depletion. Don't have any of that. Yeah, I don't think we did. Yeah, we do. We had one smoke marker. Turn it over to two. There we go. Right down here by my finger. All right. Next, sniper activity. The player whose side of the sniper marker is currently face up counts the total number of active enemy command markers selects one of them then rolls one die ten if the result is greater than the account there's no effect if the result is less than or equal to the count that opponent must choose one either eliminate the chosen command marker placing it back into the counter mix or permanently lower his command and control level by one Wow, place, okay, it says to eliminate. So that means you wouldn't have that command. So when it says place it back in the counter mix, I guess it's the same thing that would happen when they're captured. And that's not the way that worked though. is eliminated or sent to the pending command box. We're not talking about, we're not talking about just uh, placing uh, the command back into the pending command. We're talking about eliminating it. So I guess these two that were captured, they put in the command, if they're put in the counter mix, it goes back in the box. Somebody may want to make a comment about that. That's my understanding. It also says eliminated, okay. So elimination is not putting it back into the impending command. It means removing it. So those guys, let's see. If I go back over here where it talks about command. So earlier I had uh, two uh, of the command tokens were involuntarily removed or captured. Cases of an active command marker finds itself in the same hex as an enemy unit and no friendly unit is also present, the command is immediately eliminated. 
the place back in the counter mix. It doesn't say back in the appendix command. Okay. It says involuntarily other. At the end of each turn, active command can also be eliminated by the sniper activity or sent to the pending command box. So, talking about elimination. All right, so let's take a look. We've got the uh, sniper is with the Germans, okay? And we look on the board, there's not any. Yeah, there is, there's one. I can't roll less than one. So there's only one command there, so. Oh, it says less than or equal to. Okay, well, I could possibly roll a one. Let's see. I rolled a three, so. All right, so that takes care of the sniper activity. Okay, regroup. In this step, players move all command markers in their pending box to their available command box. So, we'll move the German pad one. And then what we have is we have uh, all of these others that are there are flipped. Like this one goes to one. This one gets removed uh, over here. This Soviet one gets removed to the pending box. This one here goes to one. And there we go. So there's that. All right, regroup's done. Reinforcements don't have any, then we reseed. Okay, that's where we go over here to the, to the, uh, back over here to the uh, matrix. Order matrix, and we roll. We've got, uh, I'm just gonna roll them right here. Two sevens. Three and a six. A nine and a six. A four and a four. A four and a three. So that's where we're at. That's our that's our major major uh, order matrix to start the uh, turn twelve. So all right. So that completed that turn. We're going to be heading into the next turn. And uh, the Soviets have uh, the initiative. It's at uh, nine. <clears throat> so they could actually perform quite a few uh, things here. They could do a rally with four, and then they could do a couple of fires, three each. Well, let's see, that would be, well, yeah, they could. Sure could. Because they still have the fake card. They've been holding it. They haven't been doing anything with it. So, we do have a barrage that we can do. So. All right, so. Take this off here. Show you an overview here of what's going on. So the Soviets, the Soviets' uh, right flank here is collapsed. Okay, they don't have any units now. Uh, they're like this, uh, and they're getting pressured here on this gun uh, that has a hit and can't move. And, uh, you know, this lone gun here doesn't have the strength to go against this tiger. And they're going to get overrun here by these units who are going to make a dash for those objective hexes. And uh, they just don't have enough units left. Um, 
They've got this Tiger, this T-34. Uh, they've got this big gun here, the 88, 85 millimeter. They've got this machine gun unit, a rifle unit, another rifle unit, and they're all squads. Okay. That's it. That's all they got. So this looks like the, the Germans are going to just overrun them just like they did historically. So... They were outnumbered, really, uh, in, in the manpower, I think, and in tanks. Uh, the Tiger tank, even with that uh, mobility rule, uh, which uh, I didn't roll enough times for, uh, the Tiger gun is just too powerful, and their defense, too, you know. 24 firepower. So, very interesting. I like this game quite a bit. I like all the different uh, mechanics, uh, the way things are, are done. As I've said before, I like the matrix, uh, matrix okay, on the orders. And, um, I like the command system. I like the initiative track. You know, it costs you initiative to decide how, what you're going to do, whether or not you, they've got command. Uh, they're acting outside of command. It's going to cost you more initiative. You know, you turn over too much to the, the opponent, and they can crush you um, with several orders. And... Uh, you know, you, you just can't uh, do everything that you want each turn based on your the initiative you have and the orders that are available uh, to choose from. So, if you like World War II war games, I'd recommend you, you trying this out. So, but you have to have the uh, original game, Fighting Formations, Cross Deutschland Motorized Infantry Division, to play Battle for Kharkov. Battle for Kharkov does not have all the counters that you're going to need. All the infantry counters come out of the out of the uh, first game. Okay, this is just an expansion. You got to have you got to have this game. To play this game okay and uh, this game is the one that's got the Tigers there's not any Tigers in this game which is taking place I believe in 1942 that's when it's taking place this is 43 so um, but uh, I'll pick up with the next video of the uh, turn 12 and uh but each after each turn we start the new turn we're going to be rolling for sudden death so you know at any turn now uh the game can end and uh owning these objectives is very important that's that's all that matters in the game within uh, the uh, victory conditions is the who owns these count these uh, objective axes so at the moment the germans have gained control over three of them so we still have these two here, but they're 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 in the uh, looking like they're probably going to fall the next turn. So we'll see. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button if you like the videos, so forth. Comments, put the comments in there. Uh, if I've missed a comment somewhere uh, and I didn't respond, I apologize. I'll try to go back and see if there's some comments that I missed. Uh, got quite a few videos now to go to go through all of those uh, and take some time so I try to just focus on the most recent ones but I know people pick up go watch a video from maybe last year I did or the year before some of these are some of these videos are go back a ways and there's a lot of videos I wish I still had that I could put back up on some different things so and I, there's a lot of my videos I've had to stop you know in the middle of playing 
because of uh, circumstances here, uh, personally or whatever, that caused me to have to put the game up, um, not to leave it out. But uh, even though I didn't finish, it still gives you a good idea of how the game's played and whether or not you might like it. So this is not your run-of-the-mill hex encounter game. I'll tell you that, it's not. But once you dive into the rules and you learn how things are, the mechanics and so forth, um, it's pretty easy to play. It flows uh, very easy, smooth, I should say, in play. The uh, combat is not very difficult when uh, you understand the uh, the concept and you know you have a lot of the same modifiers you call them call, they don't call them modifiers but you have a, the same modifiers I call them modifiers um, you know you've got the, the different dice okay that's that's the difference I haven't seen that in a in a military war game uh, that I can recall where you had different dice for rolling um, and that was a mod that was used for modifying, you know, which I really like. I like that that aspect, you know. Um, now I don't know if there's anything in in this game that I don't like. Okay, um, the only thing is the uh, I think I said something about the map, but you know the the map is, is um, it works. You know, it's it's maybe not as uh, artistic uh, and visual appear appealing as some other maps that I've, you know, I, I have in some other games, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, you, it's easy to tell what's what, you know, the distinguished things. The only thing I had a difficult time was I didn't recognize this as uh, depression, okay, but if you look at the chart, okay, uh, it's clear, and that, I just missed it on the chart, see, I think you pull back here. See? You can easily look at the map and then look at the chart and say, oh, yeah, that's depression. So I just I just uh, was looking at uh, this other area here, okay, and trying to match it up. Well, on this map, there's not, there's not, that's not there. There's none of that terrain, that level, I guess, going up. It's all the level goes down, down, up, down, and this is the white cutter on the terrain map so I would say that the the, the graphics are uh, simplistic uh, with uh, the terrain on the map you know um, you know it's just like you know there's not a lot of uh, I don't know if huge crops would be exactly <laughs> like that you know it might be a little bit uh, more rough, yeah, I guess, in in the in their contour lines and so forth. Might look a lot like this uh, rough here, maybe in a different color. But uh, they wanted to make it uh, stand out, so it stands out. You know, you, you know what each terrain feature is. There's there's not any confusion, you know, in what's what. So um, I do like the woods, and so forth. So. But that's the only thing that I would say, oh, well, you know, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it works. So I really like the, the, uh, gra the, uh, counters. Okay. Very well done. So, all right. So we'll stop here with this. We'll start on turn 12 on the next video. I kind of rambling on here a little bit. Um, not a lot of cards used here. Um, there's quite a few cards still not used. Uh, I'd like to see what else is in the card. I haven't really looked through the cards uh, to find out, well, what's there, you know. So, but, uh, you know, there we are. Um, that's interesting. So, all right, let's come back to the next video and see what happens in turn uh, 12. And uh, with these different order uh, orders that we have. And see what the, the whether or not the... The Soviets can uh, hold off uh, and maybe squeak out maybe uh, uh, a uh, 
victory somehow by holding on to territory um, and keep the Germans from, you know, reaching their uh, uh, their plan, which is take these the controlled areas. Okay, um, I guess for future counter offenses. So, all right, just come back and see what happens. All right, thanks for watching.